Hello everyone, and welcome back to Bird Builds, where nothing ever goes to plan. In between episodes, I've spent my time building the Shocker Farm, which is just Ian XO4's design with a different colour scheme. I figured since he already made a video on it, I don't really need to tell you how to build it, so I'm just going to show you the effect that it's had instead. By Shocker Farm standards, this design isn't even particularly fast, but I just can't use all of these. 200-something Shulker boxes every hour doesn't sound like an awful lot, until you realise that I have boxed up every single item that I had lots of. All my bulk storages, done. My emeralds, done. Iron, done. The raid farm, empty. I have filled up everything, and I still have way more shulker boxes than I can spare. Hell, I even have these empty ones here, and these empty ones over here in an area that I haven't even shown you guys yet. And so you'd think that, you know, now that I have all of these emeralds, I can sit down and do some real heavy-duty villager trading and get a whole ton of items. Problem is, of course, they're all dead. I don't just mean these guys. It's not like I'm low on golden apples. I can heal these guys straight up. But these gaps here, there used to be villagers here. One of those pillager patrols came past and just murdered a whole bunch of them. So instead of, you know, the plans that I had for this episode, I have to now spend a bunch of time putting in new villagers. This also gives me a chance to deal with some of the problems that this build has. For example, these flat walls look pretty awful, and one of the sections of this build just got, like, burnt down in a lightning strike. Now, here's an example of what I'm doing. I've managed to get the villager into his cell, and I know that I've got a good book out of him, and now I'm going to upgrade him all the way before I add any more villagers in, just so I don't accidentally double up on books or anything like that. Fire Protection 4 is a really good book, so I'm not going to get it on anyone else now. But he still has another possible book trade, so we're just going to wait for him to refill and see how it goes. So I've leveled him up to expert, and now look, he's got another one, looting three. That's another really good one that we didn't have before. I've gone ahead and added quite a few more villages to this, but 119 is out. So let's go have a look at that instead. Finally, Deep Dark. Well, Ancient City. Well, it's an interesting structure. I'll just grab one of these. Aquafinity. Not great. Three pairs of diamond leggings. And a quick charge three book. I guess this was someone's wardrobe? I guess the carpet could be useful at some point. Music discs, more enchanting bottles. What the actual? <laughs> ah yes, curse of binding, curse of vanishing and mending. Good luck breaking those. God damn. I'll refill the pickaxe a bit more. Swiss Snake 2. Uh, oh, that's close. But still, not what I want. Is that another ancient city? <laughs> okay, I mean, we can go check that one out. Okay, I can't open these chests yet. I need to deal with my box first. So let's just do that. That's interesting. The light the, shulk, the uh, skulks make doesn't light up the chest. Two Swift Sneak 1s. Okay, I can technically make a Swift Swift Sneak 3 book now. Although I would much rather that I actually had one. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't really get what I wanted from this place. Um, overall, Ancient City is like a 5 out of 10. Like, they've done a really good job with the sort of ambience and the colours. These new blocks look really cool. But, like... Couldn't you have spiced it up with something? I mean, there's not really anything here. It's just kind of a build. You know, like, this feels like something I could make. There's nothing, like, special about it. There's nothing really happening. There's not even really any danger. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go home and get the Swift Sneak on. Alright, so, yeah, how did I do that? Back to the project, which is these villages. 
The first thing we have to do today is install a safety system for these guys. Something that will make sure that they're just not randomly killed while I'm trying to do something else. To prove my point, both my flame and protection for librarian villagers were murked by a passing raid party. While I was doing that other stuff. So you can see I've done something vaguely resembling what I want to do. There's pistons above the entrance. When the pistons are powered, the villager is completely blocked off from any outside attacks, but they can still use their job site block. We just have to hook this up to all of the villager cells, and then we should be okay. Now, my plan is to do this with a block that you really don't see very often, daylight sensors. The plan is pretty simple. We hook up a daylight sensor. Every time it goes dark, the pistons push. When it goes daytime, the pistons retract. Now there's also a non-zero chance that I show up back at my base and accidentally start a raid, so I'm also going to need a kind of panic button, which I'm going to do something like this. Ah, I pressed the wrong thing. Alright, the sun is setting. Just have to see if this works. I'm hoping that it looks cool, but I honestly have no idea how this will look. Aw, oh, that, that looks good. That looks pretty damn good. Sorry guys, you have to go. So, I've gone and put all the redstone in, you can see it's all closed up, and uh, now I need to just make that safety switch. Now my general idea is just to put the uh, emergency button in this wall, but that does mean we're going to have to clear out a bit of space. We're just going to run the redstone line up the side of this wall here and send it back under the stairs to turn all of these on. Right, that's done. Uh, that got significantly harder once I realised that I wanted to put some lights around it, but uh, it works now, so I don't have to think about how weird this redstone is. But we now have our output line going this way, and we just have to attach it to all the inputs over here. Alright, so I've encountered a bit of a problem. This goes down to a slime farm that I've got prepared, like this is where the water will go to launch all the items up. Uh, it's also exactly where my redstone line is going to be. So... yeah, how are we going to fix this? Okay, so the wiring here is just incredibly jank, but... If you go up here... They're all shut, and that's exactly what you want. So, uh, it works, don't ask questions. And now we come to the important part, making it look pretty. You can see I've already gone and put in the paths above the redstone. Uh, that's why I hadn't built them yet, I wanted to put the redstone in. So they're all done, but we still have this enormous cutting around the back. Now, there's nothing to access here, so we don't need to put a path, and there is an enormous hole in the ground here thanks to a cave that squirrels down that way. So I think I'm going to try and just cover the whole thing up. Right, so you can see here that I've just laid out some lines here where I want all the... Uh, where I'm going to make the hill sort of extend out. Uh, you've also seen that there's some massive gaps between those lines, and that's because I'm going to make a cliff there. Now this is roughly what the cliff is going to look like, this sort of series of blocks. Obviously I'm going to make it look a little more interesting than this. Um, you will note that it doesn't quite fit the kind of landscape that we have around it. I'll fix that. But uh, yeah, so I think we just need to go and fill this in now and then uh, see how it looks. Right, so this is sort of stage one of terraforming you can see here. It's quite bare, it's pretty flat, it's kind of untextured, but we're going to work on all of those things. Um, basically, we've just got the shape down. That's it so far. Now we have to actually start making it look like it's a real hill. Now, the first step of that, as I said earlier, is to just texture the bottom of the cliff. Bottoms of cliffs in real life are rarely ever like clean grass like this, and so you make it look a lot more interesting by just spreading in a few different types of blocks. So I've got gravel, regular dirt, coarse dirt, cobble, and moss, and then I just go in, get rid of a few of these blocks, add a few more, and it slowly improves as you do this. So now that we've gone and done that, you can see this cliff has really got some character to it now. But essentially, it is still a flat wall, so we need to go and add some depth to this. 
pretty simply, we just cut a hole in the cliff, decorate the backside of it, let's say grab some rooted dirt and bone meal and suddenly have just a little bit more vegetation, put down a slab. <laughs> and as we put in more of these, the cliff starts to look not more realistic, but at least more interesting. Now, adding depth is pretty simple, which means it usually overlaps with the final step, which is to simply decorate. We put in a few small touches, you know, here's some glow lichen being grown out. This kind of thing pulls the whole build together and even makes it look nicer than just the textured blocks. See, from over back here, you can really see the difference. It looks a lot more alive. And even over here, you can really see it as well. Now, I have gone and added a pond up here as well, just to sort of break up this big flat landscape. And now I'm just going to come through and basically just put the vegetation back and it will look like a real hill. Alright, well, that took a bit longer than expected, but it looks pretty good, doesn't it? You can see that I've decorated the top with a few trees, and up over there I've actually put down a little seat for people to use as well next to the pond. I'm not sure how happy I am with the blending of it into the surrounding area, but I think that's a problem that I can solve later. I'm also maybe going to reconsider the cliffside, but again, that's a problem for future me. I think I'll see how it looks once I surround the entire valley of that kind of uh, block scheme. But now it's time to talk about the project that delayed the release of this video by three months. Hey everyone, Professor Burko here. So, as far as I can tell, this is a one-of-a-kind with a skeleton farm that I've made here. So. In 119, Wither Skeletons have been changed so they can spawn in nether portals. Since Minecraft's mob cap only looks for mobs in the one dimension, creating a big area of portals will constantly spawn skeletons. In multiplayer, this works a treat, but in single player you have a problem. The overworld isn't loaded, so you can't do anything with those skeletons. Almost. When a mob goes through a portal, it loads the overworld just a little bit. So if mobs keep going in, surely the overworld will be loaded long enough for them to come back out the other side. And it works! I do need to refine things a little, but this idea has legs. I have wither skulls and skulls now. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. Uh, I know that this one has been a little weird, a little disjointed, but, you know, that's what happens when you record a video over six months. I also know that I've been slow, and I said that I wouldn't be slow, but I've been slow. The response to the last video kind of took a lot out of me, but... 2023, fuck it, we ball. I'm gonna blow the fuck up this year, and... I'm not stopping until that happens. So see you in the next video. Bye.